represents 54 countries, over 2,000 languages, but united with similar interests. As news breaks, we give you in-depth analysis around Africa every Monday on Core TV News. A very warm welcome. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of the program Around Africa, where we bring to you top stories rocking the continent. My name is Brownson Uwana, your host. The Ebola virus is no more new as far as Africa is concerned. And of course, the West Africa especially have suffered more from this virus. Four countries so far has been hit with the deadly virus. And of course, South Africa became the first country to lay travel bans uh, to, or to lay an embargo, so to say, on the countries affected with the virus. On the other hand, United Nations have really frowned on the, on the step taken by South Africa, saying that it might um, disrupt uh, the flow of um, aid to those affected countries. But of course, uh, as far as the Ebola virus is concerned, every country wants to see how much they can prevent their countries from the, the virus. Healthcare Administrator is joining me on the program today, Olubukola Olawiye. Good to, join, uh, good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, of course, um, the Ebola virus, as deadly as it is, has killed a lot of people. But uh, quickly, let's look at um, what, what really is this virus, uh, the Ebola virus? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, well, this virus uh, first noticed in 1976 uh, at a river called River Ebola in the, that country called Zaya, then. Now, the, uh, now called the Republic of, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, which was actually initially uh, identified. And what happened then was that the, the water that the, they call this Ebola River, this virus was noticed there. And people that were taken from that water were already having these diseases. And before you know it, it was spreading like a wildfire then. So this Ebola actually happened firstly in 1976 when it was discovered in River Ebola in Zaya, now Democratic Republic of Congo. But um, during the period, the first um, time it was noticed, um, how, how, how were they able to curb it? Because at a point we're not hearing about the Ebola virus again. Yeah, like I used to say, there used to be a period where there will be an outbreak. And when the outbreak occurs, uh, it depends on the response of our people to it. Uh, at that time, uh, there was Response, uh, spontaneous response as well to it in terms of uh, getting people to know it and also telling people what to do, which is what our government is really doing now. And we must appreciate the effort our government, uh, especially Lagos State government, where we uh, firstly identified the first pri primary suspect and confirmed. You know, uh, the way the information has been circulated around has really helped us. And the, the effort is so good. So. Information dissemination has really helped to really curb this Ebola virus. Okay, um, of course, I'm um, talking about information. Um, a quick look at um, the countries, the most affected countries as far as the Ebola virus is concerned. Uh, looks like um, the highest number we've got so far is from Liberia. Mm -hmm. Liberia, they have um, 1, 000, 8, 1,082 cases so far. And uh, of course, as at um, 20th August 2014, they have recorded 624 death rates from the virus. And the second um, country is Equatorial Guinea, with DR, uh, yeah, Guinea, 607 cases. And of course, they've recorded 406 deaths. And this is as at 20th of August 2014. And of course, uh, we have on the third um, country with Sierra Leone having 910 cases with 392 death rates recorded, while Nigeria. Uh, marked the fourth country with 16 cases and the five death rate as at um, 20th of, uh, of um, August. And of course, new cases, a new case just came up that um, um, DR Congo, uh, there have been two cases reported there, mm -hmm. and um, it, it, it's really scary on Africa. Yeah, that's true. In fact, the figure has increased in Liberia to about 269 now as at the 22nd of August, in terms of the uh, lab confirmed. I think they have the highest number of deaths in terms of 624, uh, followed by Guinea, which 406, as you said. Uh, the one in uh, DR Congo, you know, the thing initially even came from them. And uh, at the time it happened, you know, then it was not really well known to people. But now it was well known to people. 
And the World Organization is also supporting the effort of each African countries to really see what they can do on this. And they've been sending some uh, technical people around the West African countries that this, has, this thing has been happening. And uh, we really appreciate this effort of the World Health Organization in conjunction with the Ministry of Health of each country that they've been partnering with them to ensure that uh, those who are affected are isolated and they are being treated, at least for now, and also enlightening people in terms of their keeping to their hygiene culture. Uh, because this one is very, very important. So the one that has happened in DR Congo uh, is also being attended to through the support of World Health Organization in conjunction with the Ministry of Health in the country. Now, th th there was a protest in, in, uh, in Liberia yeah. uh, some few days ago where some, some people came out to protest that um, um, the isolation centers were just too close to their homes, mm -hmm. uh, that um, they, they, they could have taken it to somewhere a little you know, more far from where, where um, people have been. But do, do you agree with that? Well, it's true, uh, because psychologically, those people living around those places, uh, they will be living in fear. Though Ebola is not hairborne, but you know the way we take things in terms of our mental reasoning. Uh, when you see death knocking on the next door, you're already thinking when he leaves the next door, it's coming to your door. So I expected the government uh, of uh, Liberia to have chosen a, a secluded area, uh, a, a place where people are not really residing, just like what they said that the, the leper colony are always you know, established outside the town where people are not really uh, residing. So I think it, they should look into the protest of these people and ensure that they re relocate these isolation centers to where people will not have traumatic experience or psychological experience of, oh, I'm living next to isolation center where Ebola patients have been treated. So it's something they have to look at. Absolutely, something they really have to look at. But um, still with Liberia, they've recorded the highest, um, they have the highest cases of 1,082 yeah. and 624 death rates. Do you think the government, on their own part, they've done well enough in terms of um, um, information to make sure that um, everybody really knows about this? Because I, uh, most people say that um, if the, if the uh, citizens had known well or have gotten a forehand information, maybe you know, it wouldn't have escalated that much. Well, the, the, the only thing I can say that happens in that country where they have a higher number of cases is that, don't forget, Liberia just came out of a war and they are still uh, under this uh, experience of war. So things still look so quiet there. And uh, the information the dissemination there may not as be as the way it is in other countries. And it depends on people, how people take this information when they really even receive them. You know, a country that has been battered by uh, different kind of uh, battles, wars, and all of that. So some information, when it comes, people just say, well, let me do my own. And uh, they may not take it the way other countries have taken it. Take, for example, in Nigeria now, uh, that's where I'm commending the effort of our government in terms of this information dissemination and the level of enlightenment of our people here. Uh, you can witness that one information that enters somebody's BB can fly to millions of people within a tickle of an eye. And over there, they may not have that luxury of really passing those information uh, to their people because they are just coming out of war and the, com the, the country is undergoing rehabilitation. So it's, it's maybe part of the reason why they are not really uh, responding to it the way they're supposed to have responded to it. But then the government as well have stopped people from coming to the capital, Monrovia. Um, that's from the rural areas because they don't want um, the case to get to, that, um, to get to the capital. But there have been some, some other cases recorded uh, on the, uh, at the capital. But in Equatorial Guinea, the case is not the same uh, because um, the rates keep going. Uh, I think at, at sometimes um, two months ago, it was around 300, mm -hmm. and uh, it has escal escalated to 607. That showed that um, they've not been able to manage it. Uh, well, uh, I still, when they called Nigeria giant of Africa, I think some areas we she told that show that uh, our giants, uh, or if I can use that word, uh, you know, in Nigeria here, this happened so fast. And in that other part of the world, the level of our technology is traveling at very nano speed. Uh, in Guinea, they may have had that information. The response of their Ministry of Health matters a lot. The way the people who are living in that country, the way they take those information also matters. Uh, because 
it's possible they may be disseminating information and it's not reaching the target audience. Uh, those who are who have reasoning to say, okay, this is thing that's going to kill me. Uh, somebody who is already in the farm has no access to radio, has no access to internet, has no access to television. How do you want him to know? And by the time, and these are the people that handle some of these carriers of Ebola, like all these uh, bush animals, the chimpanzees, the gorillas, the monkeys. These are the people in the in the in the villages, uh, in the, uh, those people living in the in the rural areas. So the information that is being disseminated may not reach these people. And before you know it, the, trans the transmission is so fast because once there is a contact with an, with an animal carriers, and the person that I've contacted has a family to interact with, carries his baby, meets his wife, lives with brothers and sisters, and the way it's it's uh, it's really spreading is so it's so rapid over there. But thank God for level of our technology and awareness and enlightenment in the in Nigeria. It has really helped us. I must I must confess. It has really helped us. And so for those kind of people who are living in the rural areas that doesn't have access to this kind of technology, they knew nothing. And they just continue to infect others. So, but thank God the way uh, the World Health Organization is coming into it, working with the Ministry of Health of each country, uh, they, they are really trying to stem the, story, the, the tide. But the deed has been done in terms of the number they have recorded. But it's just to curtail the number for now. All right, so ZMAP uh, has been said to be okay. um, likely solution to the Ebola virus, but um, um, the same um, vaccine, so to say, has been used to treat a um, few people in Liberia, and those two pe um, people have gone on, uh, have finally kicked the bucket. And um, in the United States of America, uh, the same ZMAP cured um, the, the, the doctors that have gone infected. Does it mean that um, it, it's not the same um, ZMAP uh, because it, it, it's really unclear? Well, the, the U.S. has also said it about the ZMAP that the, the one they have is not yet well uh, tested out. It's just passing through the stages of verifications. And uh, that's why they are using on their own citizens. And uh, in, 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 med in medical services, uh, there are some dr drugs that are done for tropical areas. And there are some drugs drug for temperate uh, regions. Uh, ZMAP is still under testing and investigations. And whenever it is confirmed that African countries can use it and it will work, well, the U.S. can make it available to us. But presently, I think they've done something that can work on their own people, probably be based on their own for Americans. Uh, regions where they have. But not for Africans uh -huh. yet. You know, there is a way they do some of these drugs for, for temperate and for tropical regions. So I want to say we cannot hold America to it for now because they've not really confirmed that, okay, ZMAP is the real vaccine or the drugs that can cure Ebola. They are still using it on their people as a test case. All right, let's see how well that goes. Um, if ZMAP um, if it has been configured to work for Americans, or oh, very soon uh, it, it would, it, they will configure it to work for everyone. But at this point, let's go for a very quick break. When we come back, I'll be looking at um, the, the, the closure of borders from different countries. Is this really going to help the case? Uh, or is it going to help in covering the Ebola virus? We'll find out after this break. Stay with us. The deadly Ebola virus is again spreading in West Africa. The virus has fatality rates of up to 90%, meaning many who contract the disease die. A subcontinent have witnessed over 900 deaths. Please help prevent the spread of Ebola by observing the following precautions.
This is a social responsibility awareness campaign of Paul TV News. Travel's ban has been slapped on the affected countries with the Ebola virus. And of course, there have been a lot of controversy, there have been a lot of reactions coming from this. Quickly, uh, do you think this, um, it's, this is really necessary, you know, to ba ban them uh, flight from going to these countries? Well, for me, uh, I think it's unnecessary uh, because uh, the decision to ban people from entering one country to the other in the West African region we create more panic and at this point in time we don't need the panic uh for me the most important thing is to you know you know make a lot of campaign on the precautionary measures that needs to be done at uh, each country's borders uh, which we allow people to do their normal businesses well the the information dissemination has been good and as well of you know letting people know the the implications of really catching this uh, virus but if we laid back and said people should not enter one country or the other, we know that in Africa we need each other. We transact this business interborder. Uh, we have its relationship to you know do business together. So by the time we are closing our borders to each other countries, I think uh, we are closing shop, and uh, that means it's going to affect uh, each countries economically uh, because we we take from what we cannot produce or what we are lacking, and we take we give to people or to countries that requires our old product. So by the time we are closing our borders, we are automatically closing the economy. Now, Patrick Sawyer, if um, probably um, Nigeria had taken time to um, have a very good test on him, or uh, probably um, Nigeria wouldn't have had any case of Ebola. And um, if we are taking action, Nigeria as a country are taking action earlier to say, okay, um, people from affected countries shouldn't visit the country, maybe um, the country wouldn't have been suffering from um, the, the, the epidemic. But however, looking at it from all those safety, you know, just like um, what we have, um, um, we have quarantine centers yeah. where some people have been isolated. Now, don't you think it's, it's really necessary to isolate some of these countries from the countries that have not really had any cases? Well, uh, like uh, our proverb in Yoruba used to say, uh, you don't throw away the, uh, the bad baby with the with, with bad water with the baby or the bathing water with the baby. Uh, if you are going to say because of Ebola virus, then you close your doors to those countries that are even helping your economy uh, very well. It's, it's going to affect your citizens. Uh, for me, and it will create even more inter-country disputes. And that's why UN is quickly reacting to this uh, decision by both South Africa and Liberia where they are closing their borders. Uh, because we knew that uh, there are existing relationship between all these countries. Uh, Soya is coming to the country because of uh, ECOWAS summit he needs to attend here. That's an existing relationship in terms of uh, what we do together. And this relationship has been honed for quite a while. So a, a virus outbreak should not stop countries from interacting with each other. But the most important thing to do is to ensure that at our borders. It just call our awareness to what our borders looks like and what we need to do moving forward. Now we need to, you know, do a lot of things to ensure that anybody coming to the country, there are precautionary measures that will be put in place uh, before they could come in into the country. Uh, like I was even saying earlier, that uh, if uh, it has been one of these other lower rank people, you know, in Nigeria we take some of these Liberians' uh, house helps, and they may not have the luxury of going to this kind of hospital that is uh, well equipped to even identify that the man is a, an Ebola virus patient. Uh, the doctor may be treating for maybe symptoms of malaria, enteric fever, and before you know it, the doctor is playing with Ebola. You know, you can imagine going to an hospital where, we, where it is, the hospital is not well grounded. Uh, all these local uh, hospitals in our, you know, slum areas. Yeah, Ebola virus will have been a great heartbreak for us. But for, for me, since uh, we're able to really identify the first primary suspect on time, the next thing for us to do is to really uh, look at all our borders and put a lot of precautionary measures, safety measures, whereby people coming in and going out are uh, screened very well. And those who are entering to the country where there are Ebola uh, virus outbreaks are 
should be enlightened on how to you know do with people around there and some of the hygienic, hygienic things they need to do so closing the borders will not help anybody uh, it will only have adverse effects on the economy of each countries that are really doing this a quick rundown of some countries that have shut down their borders because of the ebola virus senegal closes guinea border over the ebola virus and of course every coast on 25th of august um closed their border uh, within all the neighboring countries saying they don't want um, any business for now. Everybody should be in their country and uh, they feel that's very, very important. Just like you rightly said, the World Health Organization came out to criticize this move, saying that um, it, it would affect a lot of things. For instance, um, some countries um, live, uh, especially when it comes to food products, depends on one another to get some of these things done. This, the closure of this border uh, will only cause more damage according to World Health Organization but they have instead said that um, government of these countries should look for a better way of managing the situation rather than closing the borders quickly how can um, how can one truly prevent this virus well uh, for what uh, it has been here on the radio in the televisions uh, firstly we need to live an hygienic life uh, like it has been here to us uh, maintain a very hygienic life. Make sure your environments are clean. Uh, you wash your hands after going to the loo. Uh, you wash your hands with soap. It's uh, amazing to me the way our people have responded to the issue of sanitizer, where most of our people now use sanitizer as if it's the Ebola virus killer. A sanitizer is even written on the bottle that is a bacteria prevention lotion. Uh, well, they contain some uh, alcohol that kills some infections. Though it's good after washing your hands with soap and water, uh, you can as well complement it with using a sanitizer. But what is, what is more important for us is to really wash our hands with soap and water. Then we can use that sanitizer. Uh, also, we should avoid people that have been known to have this uh, disease. Uh, the primary carrier of this uh, Ebola virus is all these uh, bush meats, chimpanzee, mo gorillas, monkeys, bats, a particular, uh, a particular species of bats. And we know that we have some of our people, especially when you travel along uh, if uh, express route to Ibadan, see some of these uh, uh, bush meats have been displayed on the roadside for people to buy. And uh, well, Nobody knows which one has Ebola, which one doesn't have Ebola. So that's why everybody has been advised, you know, to abstain from such for now. And also, uh, we need to, you know, ensure that we keep our environment clean. Then once we see somebody who has uh, some symptoms of malaria, enteric fever, the person can see the doctor, can go to the nearest hospital for check. Uh, it may, it may not be Ebola virus, but it's also good to really identify it on time so that the person can be isolated if it is, it is eventually confirmed that the person is a, a, a virus carrier. So some of these preventions, if we are able to really do it very well, uh, it will stir, uh, stem the tide of the way the virus will you know, ravage our country and our people. Now, there have also been uh, a lot of argument about um, if Ebola is airborne or not. Uh, I've had salt water solutions sometimes um, some weeks ago where a lot of uh, messages were going, uh, were going through Blackberry and all, all, all sorts mm -hmm. of uh, um, net social network about salt water, drinking salt water, and then um, rubbing salt water, wh whatever it is. Um, is it airborne? Uh, Ebola virus is not airborne. It's not, not airborne. I'm, I'm repeating it. It's not airborne. Ebola virus is, can be transmitted through contact uh, with the carrier, uh, with their fluids, semen, blood, uh, urine. When you have contact with somebody and sweat, when you have contact with somebody who is a carrier, that's where you carry Ebola. Ebola is not here, born. I must, I must uh, I really mention this. When I was in Abuja, I was coming in back to Lagos, the, the SMS entered my phone and they said, uh, before you leave home this morning, bath with a salty water without soap, then drink salty uh, water as well to cure Ebola. And I was like, what does salt and water have to do with Ebola virus? It's a, fi it's a virus. So uh, immediately they did well to really come on here and really, you know, uh, make sure that people are not really doing what people are flying around. And 
with the little effect that that one has, we had that some people lost their life in jaws, uh, because uh, for especially for those who are hypertensive, uh, which doctor always tell them that you know reduce your salt intake, and the same person because Ebola is running away from death and is going to meet another death, uh, and that's why I want to use this medium to really uh, uh, tell our people that uh, in 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 our country I, I observe something we 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 normally suffer from bandwagon of. Uh, what this one is doing, whether it is right or not, we just join. I remember the case of uh, uh, bomb blast in Ikeja, uh, long time now. Uh, some people had the blast and they were just running, not knowing what is even chasing them. And before you know it, a lot of them ran into a canal, uh, not even knowing where they are running to. So I think in this situation, we should always seek uh, expert ad advice when we get such information uh, to say, is uh, Ebola air, airborne, and because of that, we start to bath with salt water, salt water and drink uh, <laughs> salty water. So it's not really airborne. And the most important thing is for us to seek medical advice and expert advice when we get such information, maybe through our phones or BlackBerry, or even you get the information from any source. Any source. Okay, quickly, before I let you go, uh, what should the African Union be doing uh, in a bid to really curb this? Well, at this point in time, when there is an outbreak like this, I think it requires the joint effort of all the African unions. For those countries that, are, that have not been infected, uh, they can, you know, join forces with those that have been infected to support financially, uh, medically. They can, you know, send some of their technical experts down to those areas that have been ravaged because uh, what happens to here today, uh, it's another thing that may happen to be tomorrow. And by the time B was able to respond very well to the damage of A, when it comes to his turn, he will be able to do the same. So as we are together as brothers and sisters, I expect other African countries that are not being ravaged by Ebola virus to support the campaign of eradicating this virus. And once we join forces together uh, in this regard, we'll be able to, you know, kill the virus dead. All right, that's it. That's uh, hope and, of course, hope of all Africans to be able to kill the Ebola virus totally in not just West Africa, but uh, on the continent. Thank you very much for being a part of the program. Thank you for having me. And, of course, hope that you're obliged to our call next time. Oh, yes, I'm readily available anytime I'm called upon. All right. That's Around Africa for this week. We'll be back again next week. We'll be looking at some of the issues that concerns Africa. My name is Brown Sinu, and a very big thanks for watching. On behalf of my production crew, have a wonderful day. One continent, 15 countries, yes, over 2,000 languages, yeah. that united in same interests. As news right. breaks, we give you in depth analysis around Africa every Monday on Core TV News.